right up and get your tickets for another moment in gaming history. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is your next moment in gaming history. What we're going to talk about today is the evolution of the brown box, which we talked about last week or the week previous, and you may know about made by Rock Bear, who actually sold his prototype off to Magnavox after trying to sell it to multiple different companies, including cable companies and TV companies. Eventually settling on with Magnavox, as they were the one who was most interested in it. Now, the importance of this particular product, which is known as now as the Magnavox Odyssey, once they finished producing it, is the fact that it became the first commercially viable video game console for the home. Up until this time, we had had mostly pinball machines or Pronov arcade stand-ups, most people were going there to actually play video games. Nobody had the option of really bringing a console like this to their home unless it had been like a handheld game that only played like one game. What made the Odyssey different is that it could actually play multiple different games. Now, to bring this to the home, Magnavox actually simplified Bear's design to an extent. One, they cleaned it up. It was no longer made out of wood. It was made out of more of a plastic, which was more affordable to make at that time. Another thing that they did is Bear's prototype would actually do color. Magnavox realizing that most people didn't really have much of a color TV at their home due to the cost, and to keep costs down to the unit itself, removed the option for color. The unit would only ever play in black and white, which was considered an okay compromise considering the fact that color TVs and TVs in general at this time were very expensive products for the individual consumer to own. So, with that said, what they did to compensate is they would have a number of overlays that you could put on top of the TV that would add a splash of color and help indicate the type of game that you were playing. Now, when the console launched, it came with roughly 12 different titles and would eventually release 11 more cards, totaling a, totaling a complete total of 28 titles for the console. Now, the extra cards that were sold for this were sold for roughly $5.95 a piece. On top of that, it had a $25 add-on that would allow you to add on what they called a light rifle. Now, this was basically almost looked like a, a BB gun from like the 80s, 70s, and 80s, where you could aim it and it would shoot a beam of light at the screen. When it hit, it would indicate a tally to your points. This was a very clever way of marketing the system, and the system itself worked in a very clever way. Now, you'll notice I said cards, not carts. That's because there was actually no memory on the actual carts themselves. What they effectively did is when you put them into the console, it would rewire the console itself in order to bring up and reprogram it so that it would play the game of your choice on the screen. Now, that's a vastly different concept than what Atari would do later with ROM carts. Now, ROM carts are exactly what they say they are. These things have onboard memory that could store a program. When you put the, when you put the cart into the actual game system and turned it on, it would load a program. The Magnavox Odyssey was so primitive, it was not capable of doing that. What it was capable of doing is giving a proof that not only could you bring a console into the home and show it on your TV, but you could actually reprogram it to do multiple different games. Given the fact that it sold roughly around $65,000, 65,000 units in its first year and totaled 300, over 310,000 units total in the lifespan before it was discontinued in 1975, that was more than proof of concept to push the medium forward and to get more people clamoring to get into this market. So, what do you guys think? Do you think this is a key moment in gaming history? Do you think it's just an add-on to the brown box? Do you think it's not really worthwhile talking about at all? And we should just jump forward to Atari Nintendo. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, happy gaming.